Pope St. Pius X was in the habit of teaching the seminarians in Rome. And one day he asked them the very simple question that we all learned as children, how many marks has the church? And one of the more bold seminarians raised his hand and said, there are four marks. It's one, it's holy, it's Catholic, and it's apostolic. Uh, the great teacher, Pius X, congratulated on such a brilliant answer, and he said, there's two more. It is Roman, and it is persecuted. These are marks of the church. He followed up that answer with, if they have persecuted me, they will persecute you also. Persecution is the daily bread of our Catholic faith. It's the surest sign that we are disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Catholic Church can say, as did St. Paul, I bear the wounds of Christ in my body. Most of you remember the story, at least. Around the turn of the last century, the shipyards building an unsinkable ship called the Titanic. We have learned since then the words of St. Anselm, how true they are, that the only bark and only the bark of Peter is unsinkable. Our Lord promised that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. The Lord promised, I am with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world. The church, like the moon, at times appears to wane and to grow. The moon is not destroyed by this, and never will the church be destroyed. She truly is unsinkable. When we see the storm in today's gospel, when the storm raged at its height, our Lord rises from his sleep. And our Lord will protect the church when the storm is greatest against her. In Cleveland, one of our parishioners several years ago gave me a painting by Jerome. It's called The Prayer of the Martyrs. You, it's, the camera is positioned in the Colosseum. You see the Roman capital over the walls of the Colosseum. You see in the center of the Colosseum, thousands of people, spectators. You see in the foreground, people tied to pillars with their bodies on fire, as Nero was wont to use them as human torches in his persecution of the Christians. You see in the very center, a whole group of Christians about to be martyred on their knees with their eyes and their hands focused on heaven. And then there's a venerable old man standing. He is their consolation. The most beautiful pages of church history are written in the blood of the martyrs. The Christ looks most beautiful as he hangs upon the cross. And the church is most beautiful when she too is persecuted. All of the apostles except one were martyred. Some were scourged, stoned, beheaded, crucified. There were ten great persecutions and many others of the faithful. Of those persecutions, history tells us about 12 million Christians were killed. Nero and Diocletian can boast about having the worst persecution against the Christians. During the reign of these two tyrants, if you will, Two million Christians alone were killed. St. Paul was beheaded because he was a Roman. He couldn't be crucified. St. Peter was crucified upside down because he felt himself unworthy to die in the exact manner that our Lord died. St. Stephen, after his eloquent dissertation on the faith, was stoned. St. Ignatius wrote to his followers because he had heard they had planned to rescue him. He wrote to them and said, please do not rescue me. This is what I belong for. Let me be the wheat which is ground between the teeth of the lions. St. Lawrence, 
was able to say in levity, you can turn me over now for this sight is done. We could not have even endured that. But yet the heat of his heart, the love in his heart, burned greater than the fire outside which roasted his body. St. Polycarp, whose feast day we celebrated on Friday, the anniversary of the death of Father Roy Randolph, was lit as a torch on a street, was finally killed at the scaffold. Every country has been blessed, as we remember with the start of the Christmas season, as Bethlehem. Every country has given its children to the altar of God. Bethlehem had the privilege of giving 40 little boys for Christ's honor, the first martyrs of the church. All the Neros, all the Herods, all the Pilots could not sink the battle, the bark of Peter. They've all died. Peter lives on. 24 times have the popes fled Rome. 24 times have the popes returned to Rome victorious. The weapons of the modern world, even her nuclear ones, are as stones thrown to heaven, which will fall back upon its hurlers. The very means employed to exterminate the Catholic faith will soon be used to propagate the Catholic faith. Tertullian, once Catholic, once a great apologist for the church, said our numbers increase every time you have your bloody harvest. He is the one who coined the phrase, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. God said to Adam and Eve after their sin, in sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. St. Augustine continues that phrase and says, and in persecution are the saints brought forth. What a beautiful spectacle on earth before God, before the angels, to see the saints confound their accusers. They face joy in the face of death. They have the patience in persecution. Most astoundingly, they had love for their enemies. It was St. Stephen who said in imitation of our Lord, lay not this sin to their charge as they were throwing stones and crushing his skull and his body and breaking his ribs. These martyrs had influence not only upon men, but upon animals themselves. Fierce, wild lions who would lick the feet of the saintly martyr. What was the end of the persecutors? The one who first persecuted our Lord, Judas, We know what his end was, suicide. Similarly, similarly, was Pilate's end. He was banished and he committed suicide. Nero was deposed and killed by his slave. Napoleon, who took Pius VI hostage, and Pius VI died in his hands, or in his grasp, He was exiled first to Elba, the island of Elba, reconciled and came back actually to be emperor again, and this time was exiled to the island of St. Helena. Simon said of the Christ child that this child is set for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel. The the apostles were in prison. The greatest Jewish historian, Gamaliel, warned his fellow Hebrews, do not touch these men. If their work is that of men, they will fail. If it is that of God, you cannot overthrow it. Why are we so fearful even in the 21st century? 
the foundations of Christ church cannot be destroyed. The world may shake as it will, but the foundation built upon Christ will endure. Julian the Apostate, who reigned for two short years, he forbade schools to the Christians, he forbade public jobs to the Christians, he forbade any of them to have a trial. He sided with the arch heretic Arius. And what did St. Augustine call Julian the Apostate? I'm sure Julian was not too happy when he was called just a little cloud passing by St. Augustine, or Athanasius, excuse me. Abortion, the moral crisis which our country is facing, the liturgical crisis which our church began to face after Vatican II is just a little cloud. And it soon, too, will pass. The Catholic Church, its existence, is one of the greatest of miracles. Why fear? Christ has promised that the Church will last through all times. You might be part of that promise. The church in the catacombs, it did not weep. It did not feel sorry for itself. The church in the catacombs prayed, hoped, and stood proud, full of conviction that God is on their side. If our Lord is on our side, who can stand against us? When the storm arose, Christ arose and commanded the winds and the sea. And there was great calm. There will again, my dear friends, be great calm when these little clouds pass. Have firm conviction of that in your prayers. God love you and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.